Hi, let's talk about punties and making what I would probably argue is the world's simplest punty. But first, let's understand some of the principles behind making punties, okay? So I've got a few drawings here on the floor. This to me is a basic fundamental punty. And to understand how punties works, we're gonna sort of inspect this drawing a little bit. So here's the bottom of the cup. First thing to notice is the bottom of the cup has a little kick in it. Flat bottom cups aren't flat on the bottom. If you look at any store-bought cup or any well-made cup, there's a rim because that rim is much more likely to sit flat. Also, that little indentation gives the punty a little place to go. The other thing that happens, and this is why a little kick is really important, is that glass breaks in a curve. It just does. If you look at, if you drop a piece of sheet glass, it breaks in a giant curve. When glass breaks, what you'll end up with is a little sort of semicircular break from the punty. So if I have this curve matching this curve kind of, but not fully like encasing it, the glass is all working together. Since we know glass breaks in the curve and we can't stop it, work with what the glass does. The critical part of this is this curve, that there is some point here this little space here is what starts the break. If you come over here and look, if, the, if you've got a punny that the tip of it's too big, there's too much glass and you smash it on, glass is still gonna break in a curve, but now guess what? It takes a chunk out. And I will show you examples of what that looks like. We have some real life examples. Another common punty that, that people make is this one here which is pointy. This comes from holding the pointy rod at an angle. There is no glass here. So what usually happens when you go to break this off, even though this looks really delicate, first, if you just barely touch it, it might work, but there's no support. Second, usually it breaks off there and leaves this chunk sticking out in the bottom, which looks like this. You can barely see that, but there is a chunk sitting there sticking up. You also notice that there is no curve in the bottom of this cup. So, this comes from that pony down there. Not good. Even though that is a good size punty, this giant breakout space here, that comes from this smashed on punny that I drew over here. Again, glass bricks in a curb. If you walk around any hot shop where there's a bunch of beginner cups and you flip them all over, you'll see these little smiley faces. I call them smiley faces. It's a common thing to see in the bottom of a cup is a sign of a punny that smashed on too much. But if you start to notice that, you go, wait a second, there's a pattern here. Glass bricks in a curb, I can work with that. Now, let's look at a good punty. First off, Look at the size, the proportion of that size punty to the size of the object. Both of the bottoms of these are about the same size. Look at the size of this punty, okay? Now, even though these two are really similar in size, look at the flatness of this bottom and look at the semi-curved nature of this bottom. Like I said, these things, that curve there matches the curve of the punty. So this punty, I can rub it and I have no, there's almost no chance I'm gonna get cut. I don't need to do anything to that punty for this to just live in the world. If I wanted to torch this, it would go melt away really easy. If I don't want to torch it, the punty leaves a mark on the bottom of the piece that shows me it's handmade glass, but it's well made as well. Um, when I teach intro or blowing, my goal is for people to make punties that they do not need the coal work off. And if they choose to torch it, it torches away really, really, really easily. There's a lot of things that the maker of this did to become, to make it be a successful punty. They indented the bottom so that it would sit flat, no rocking. They matched the punty with that and they matched the scale of the punty to the size of the object. They did not accept a giant punty for their little delicate object. So punties aren't as simple as just making a shape of a gather on glass. Punnies are about matching the delicacy of the punty to the size of the object that you're making. If I'm making a delicate goblet, 
I must have a much more delicate punty. If I'm making a big heavy thing, I must have a bigger punty. But I am gonna demonstrate what I think of as probably the simplest punty. Most of it gets made by gravity, which works all the time. I don't need to do anything to make this work. I'm going to, the only thing I'm gonna be careful about when I'm in the furnace is making sure that I don't gather too much glass. Even if I had to take this, make a good shaped punty, but I have too much glass, that glass is gonna have a lot of heat. And if I'm trying to stick it to the bottom of a delicate piece, the sheer volume of heat can weld it onto the bottom of the piece. A punny, if you're a flame worker out there, you know this term, a punny is a cold seal. It depends on the bottom of the piece being cold and the tip of the punny being hot. That difference in temperature is gonna allow it to break off when you're done. So, even if I make the world's best punty, but the bottom of my piece is too hot, when I stick it on, it's still gonna weld on forever. So, timing, all those things. But if you have everything else right, you've indented the bottom of your piece, it's not too cold, everything else, here's how you make a simple, good punty. Shouldn't take you two minutes to make a punty. Make sure I got a little heat in my punty rod. I'm gonna do my best to get a small amount of glass on the very, very tip. I still want to even gather, but I'm not trying to get a bunch of glass. As soon as I come out of the furnace, I'm gonna hold it up. Watch what's happening to the tip of that. It is forming that curve we talked about all on its own. Now, Margaret, push down and try to control the shape of that arch. So now look. I have basically a simple arch. The thing that is really cool about this, I can touch it a little bit and it makes a little dot. I can touch it more and it makes a bigger dot. Doesn't matter how hard I smash it, it still keeps that curve there, which is the thing that's gonna start the breaking off process. There is no way I can smash this on too much. That back line, I don't care if it's bumpy, what matters is the tip. The tip of the punny is what matters for breaking off. So that's just a simple, I call it a dome punty. Most of the shape is made by watching what's happening when I, after I gather and holding it up in the air. When I'm marbling, I'm trying to make this a thin skin so my left hand's on top. I'm not just blindly pushing forward though because I don't want to peel all the glass off the tip. I need support right here. So I'll point on my drawing. See here? I need support here. No support breaks off and sticks on the bottom of my piece. Way too much support, big blobby thing, no curve. This support and a nice curve going into the bottom of the piece takes you 30 seconds to make that punty and you'll have a lot more success and happiness not having to go into the coal shop to fix the problem that shouldn't exist from making a simple punny. Now, is this the only punny? No, there's tons of other punnies. We won't get into that, but this is the simplest and easiest one to make. Doesn't require reheating. It's ones that I use for myself when I'm bringing myself punties, when I have my partners bring me basic punties. It's basically just this. Thanks, we'll see you soon.